HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to this best of edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we recap some highlights of 2018 and get you caught up on some of the most recent happenings in town. First, the first Hopkinton Winter Farmers Market of the Year took place at Weston Nurseries. Here's a look. On Saturday, December 15th, the first of six indoor farmers markets was hosted at Weston Nurseries. Here's a look. Farmer's Market, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is the uh, first year of the Farmer's Market in the winter. It is, it is. Uh, so Western Nurseries used to host the Farmer's Market six, seven years ago. Then it moved to the Common, and Laura Davis took over as the farm manager. Called Laura a few months ago, said, let's consider a winter market. You think it's a good idea? And she said, excellent idea. They're looking for certain dates throughout the winter. So we set up six dates pretty much once a month. It'll be on Saturdays from um, you know December through May and they'll be from nine to one and we're looking like we're going to get at least you know 18 20 vendors for each market wide range of anywhere from the the vegetable growers to the artisans and maple syrup and the bread company from worcester everybody loves um, they're all here and we've got music and not-for-profit groups as well so it's a great atmosphere uh, the first one we're holding in our old greenhouses the next ones we'll have in our brand new greenhouse which is really going to be nice oasis escape during the uh, cold winter months so every month we'll have them and we invite the audience to come on down excellent and a huge turnout today uh, did you expect this amount of people actually this is a little better this is a good example of networking Laura of course knows a lot of people Laura Davis but all the um, the vendors did a good job letting their contingencies know and I'm impressed our parking lot is as full as it is in May. <laughs> There's a lot of people here today, so very happy about that. You have a good time? Uh, oh. We are. Weston. You like the farmer's market? My wife is disabled. She's actually... She's actually yeah, so these are all natural herbal skincare products. Everything's made with infused herbs, so you have all the... Um, healing benefits of the plants, um, no chemicals. Terrific, so like what's the company called? Julie Herbals. Uh, my name is Julie. I started this about a year ago. Um, this is my first year doing farmer's markets. And uh, how are you enjoying the farmer's market? I'm enjoying it. Um, I, did the, I did the Hopkinton farmer's market outside this summer on the common, and this is my first winter market, so I'm excited to be here. Perfect, and a really good turnout today. You getting a lot of visitors over here? Yes, yes, everybody's shopping for the holidays, which is great. Well, we have zipper pouches, and earrings, and women's accessories, and hats, and scarves. Terrific, uh, can, are you a local business? Uh, what's your company called? Um, Cardinal & Co, and I am in outside of Burlington, Vermont. And is this your first time at the uh, Winter's Market? It is, yes. And how are you enjoying it so far? It's great. The crowd is wonderful. Very friendly. A good turnout? Yes. We are selling heat packs. They can be um, heated in the microwave for those of you who like the heat. 
Um, they also can be cooled in your freezer if you prefer. We have different sizes. We have neck warmer size, and then our most popular item this season has been the belly bags, which is great for tummy aches or different ailments. Um, all of our products are done made by us. They have essential oils in them, and we kind of just started it by accident. We were looking for Christmas presents, and then it just snowballed from there. So. Terrific. Uh, what's your business called, and is there somewhere that people could find you online? Yes, um, we are called Natural Creations by CNA for Kathy and Amy. Um, you can find us on Facebook at Natural Creations by CNA. And um, on there, we respond, we have our emails and everything. Awesome, and how you join, I believe this is the first time there's been a winner's market, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Uh, how you enjoying the winner's market? Are you getting a good turnout? We are, we're doing a great business, so come it's, on down in January, too. Yep, we'll be here in January. Yes, we're selling Girl Scout cookies to um, save up money for our camping trip. Uh, we're going to go to a ranch in New York uh, this March. Terrific. And uh, what Girl Scout troop are you girls from? 68243. And, uh, how's the turnout been here at the Winter's Market? Are you getting a lot of sales? Yes, we have uh, we've been doing really well. We um, A lot of people like the Thin Mints, so we've sold a lot of those and the Caramel Delights. The other five markets will take place on Saturdays, January 19th, February 23rd, March 23rd, April 20th, and May 18th. All markets will be open from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Hiller's winter sports had a nice start to the winter season. Here is how things have gone so far. In the latest Hiller hockey news, on December 20th, Hopkinton was at Medfield. It was a 3-2 Hopkinton lead heading into the third period, but four goals from Medfield in the third secured the Warriors' win. Medfield took the game by a final of 6-3, handing the Hillers their first loss of the season. There's Walsh. Walsh just speeding by a number of Blackhawks and he'll put it in. The Hillers strike first with 7.59 left in the second period. Wow, that was a beauty of a goal by Sean Walsh. What a great play. He was able to pick that puck up in the neutral zone. Swing around fast and with his speed, just able to outmaneuver all the Bellingham players there and snap it right by the goalie. Hopkinton followed up nicely on December 22nd versus TV Elfo Bellingham. The unstoppable junior Sean Walsh racked up another hat trick, a pair of second period goals, and an additional in the third period helped the Hillers to a 5 1 win. Here comes Hopkinson, quick up the far side is Simos, and then it's poked in by Walsh. A beauty of an assist by the captain, Steve Simos, and Walsh just able to poke it in. After the win versus Bellingham, the Hillers took down Marlboro 4-0 on December 26th, but then fell to Algonquin 2-1 on December 29th. To start off the new year, the Hillers grabbed a 4-1 road win over Holliston. Hillers hockey now stands at 5-2 and two on the season. Shoot the puck. Here's Walsh racing up the ice. Walsh coming in quick. Around the goalie and in. Bellingham may have the two-man advantage, but Sean Walsh doesn't care. He has the hat trick. 5-0 Hillers. Great work there. Nice shorthanded goal. Despite the fact that he was hooked and almost held there, he still managed get the breakaway and put it in the net. Heading into their first game of the new year versus Westwood, Hiller's boys basketball stands at 2-2 two and two on the season. On December 28th, the Hillers fell to a tough Westboro team, 65-47. The injury-riddled Hopkinton girls basketball team have dropped two straight. 
They lost 34-22 to Ashland on December 21st and 63-23 versus Foxborough on December 29th. Hiller's girls basketball is now 3-2 overall on the season. Hiller's boys and girls swimming started off 2019 with a co-ed win over Holliston on Wednesday, January 2nd. The final tally was 92-86 in favor of the Hillers. Hillers wrestling is 3-6 overall. They started off with a loss to a tough Dedham team. The dover sherborne hopkinton girls hockey co-op is 2-4 on the season overall. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. Each and every April prior to the Boston Marathon, some of the elite runners from Kenya visit Elmwood Elementary School. Here's a look at this past year's event. For the 26th year, John Hancock brought some of the elite Kenyan athletes to Elmwood School as part of the Scholars and Stars program. Prior to the event, some of the students studied Kenyan culture and had a chance to meet with some of the biggest marathon stars Kenya has to offer. Here's a look at another fun-filled day at Elmwood. You having a good time today at Elmwood, meeting the students? Yeah, we yeah, great time to talk with them, teaching them, showing them what is in Africa. So we are in Kenya, so we are, it was a great time, you tell me. Yeah. You like all the uh, work they've done uh, studying your culture? Yeah, even I was telling them the culture, how do we do in Kenya, so it was a great time, yeah. Yeah. Hi! What's your name? Peter. Peter, how do you like uh, meeting the runners today? I like it. Did you uh, learn I don't a lot like it, I love it. What? Did you learn a lot studying about their culture? Yeah. Excellent. Is there someone that you like talking to the most when the runners? Um, Philemon. I drew a poster of him over there. Hi! Did you guys have fun? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I got a second too. Me too. Oh, look at that. I'm on the news. Uh, yeah. But I, I made a poster of Wilson Chen. Ah, it's very amazing. We like the work that the kids have uh, drawn. It's very wonderful. Especially the way they have uh, drawn the sketches. We see that it resembles us very well and the way we used to run. So they are really fast in learning and drawing the right uh, uh, pictures, so we like it very much. Mm. Excellent. Is this your first time in Elmwood? Yeah, it's, very, it's our first time in Elmwood and even in the United States, so the first time. And we are very much happy that we have been invited also. We have seen many great things that uh, our welcoming people are here and they are now friendly, so we like it very much. Are you ready for uh, the big day on Monday? Yes, we're very much okay because we've been preparing for had enough time there in Kenya to prepare well for this uh, big day that we've been waiting for so long. Great to be back with you. It's great to see you still hanging out here. Um, I just look at, at the excitement on their faces and you can hear the kids behind us. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, the teachers really focus on this after they get their, their tests out of the way. And I just had a couple of conversations with some of the teachers and this is just one thing that they will never forget the rest of their lives. I've talked to some of the Hopkinson track and field athletes, and they talk about how memorable this whole thing has been to them. And it has inculcated in them a love for running and, and the whole sport. So I think it benefits Hopkinson's team. And while I have a second, let me also mention that there are studies out there now that show that memory and focus are improved by running and, and good exercise. If you're a swimmer, that's fine. If you bike, that's great too. But academically, high school kids and college kids do their best among all sports teams in track and field academically. So there's something to this. 
and it's all great for the kids here. And I can hardly hear myself think right now, Tom. You know, one inside thing to tell all your viewers is I've watched last year in particular, some of the older people who have been here before, men and women, might be their second or third time at Hopkinson and running Boston. They take the first timers aside from Kenya and they tell them all about what's gonna happen. And you should see the face of the first timers as they're hearing the story. They love it, they start laughing, you see all their teeth, so they know they're in for a real treat. And uh, for those that don't know, you also broadcast the Boston Marathon. Uh, you want to call it this year? I do. I'll be doing the international telecast and co-hosting that as we go out all over the world. We're, we're shown all over Africa, all over Europe. Um, it's really a, a wide range. Germany, France, I can go on and on. We'll get the Boston Marathon televised and we'll hear about Hopkinton as well. All right, well, hopefully the rain holds off for us a lot. I look forward to it, and it's an honor to be with you guys out here. Please give a Hopkinton welcome to Mr. Steven Sambo. <laughs> Let's give an Elmwood shout out to Mr. Philemon Rona. <laughs> Cheer in, in Elmwood for Gladys Chichir. <laughs> Felix Candy. Norbert Keegan, <laughs> Mr. Wilson Chabet, <laughs> to Caroline champion in marathon running. How about a great welcome here to Elmwood School for Joffrey Kirui. home now it's so fun to see all kids excited and all all right make us so happy and uh, are you ready for the big day i am <laughs> yeah for sure how is training going good really good yeah it has been good excellent and uh do you always just look forward to coming to this event the kids i know just uh, love to meet the runners always love to scan and see those smiley faces out here uh, the day before the race or like this uh like few days before the race so it's good yeah it brings back a lot of memories <laughs> yeah. from being in elmwood just so much fun just looking back and seeing all the fun that they could have now and it's really inspiring to see like people that have made it to the the big stage of running because often running isn't very uh, yeah, we popular only, sport. Yeah, we only do like dual meets and stuff. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Did, they give, did they give you any tips at all? Uh, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Always have fun. Dance, yeah. dance hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, and how's the track season going so far? Uh, I think we're just going good. <laughs> going good. Yeah, we had first, meet first, yeah. first meet yesterday. First meet, first meet, first meet. Yeah, one of our first nice. meet yesterday. It was, it was tough, it was cold, but we did it and we yeah, had fun. <laughs> It was awesome. It was awesome. It was so exciting. There was so much going on. It was so cool to see the runners too. Just like I remember it from third grade. So cool. And how was it meeting these uh, elite runners? Did they give you any tips? Um, not tips, but they were really funny and really personable. Like you see them running and you're like, oh my god, they're like superhuman. But they're just like us. They just can run really fast. Yeah, I remember when I was in third grade, it was like the coolest thing. Everyone coming here like to Hopkinton, my hometown, it was so cool. 
Yeah, it was so cool to see how their faces light up as they entered each room. Like every single time the announcer was like, oh, and they've won this and that. They were just so excited for them. And it's really exciting to see that. All right, and how's the season going so far? Good, cross country's over, so that's fall, but now we're into track and it's been going well. We just had our first meet yesterday and we won, so that was great. Girl Scout Troop 65040 hosted their always beloved Edible Book Festival event this past April. Here's a look. Girl Scout Troop 65040 hosted the annual Edible Book Festival. Participants had the chance to try to earn a top three spot in three different categories, adult, children, and family. Here's a look at the great work. Yeah, so we started this event um, three years ago for our bronze award and it was a really big turnout and um, pretty much here you make an edible um, creation that has to like do with the book, like you represent a book through food. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it and we started it because we um, did our um, bronze award on um, uh, like getting people excited about reading, people enjoying reading. We're Girl Scout Troop 65040 of Eastern Mass, and um, we have um, like eight girls, and pretty much so we're a cadet troop so um, it's our second year being cadets and we have one more year and this year we're really um, happy because we're working on our silver award project um, and we're doing that on saving the bees we actually have an event coming up on May 11th um, uh, it's a, we're screening the bee movie in third place from the children's section was the Click Clack Move by Madeline Ritterbush. Um, the second place, this, the second place winner was Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix by Hannah Connors. In second place 
is if you give a pig a That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. And from all of us at HCAM, we would like to wish all of our viewers and their loved ones a very happy new year. In the latest Hiller Hockey news, on December 20th, Hopkinton was at Medfield. It was a 3-2 Hopkinton lead heading into the third period, but four goals from Medfield in the third secured the Warriors' win. Medfield took the game by a final of 6-3, handing the Hillers their first loss of the season. Walsh. Walsh just speeding by a number of Blackhawks and he'll put it in. The Hillers strike first with 7.59 left in the second period. Wow, that was a beauty of a goal by Sean Walsh. What a great play. He was able to pick that puck.